Welcome, everyone. This is the May 7th Jalen Zones production user call. We have Jan, Rod, Philip, Doug, and myself, Michael. And Doug, you have just returned from a Linux Foundation event regarding containers in Seattle. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I went out to Seattle mainly for a thing called Container Plumbing Days, which is um, a one-day conference uh, focused on just the low-level parts of, of Linux containers and ideally containers on other platforms. Um, so I offered to do a lightning talk on progress in FreeBSD running um, Linux-style OCI containers using jails and um, ZFS and things like that. And that was quite... Um, they were happy to to have that because it's the first time that they've had non Linux content in that particular track. So um, I felt kind of welcomed. I uh, gave my talk as a 10, 15 minute talk with a bit of a demo, a bit of history on jails and, and the other pieces of technology that we're using. Um, and uh, generally seemed to be well received. A, a few people came up to me and said, Hey, I ran jails when they started and um they were awesome but um things moved on and so yeah um there was a lot of interest in in the idea that this how this paradigm works on other platforms and i'm hoping to see more content like that i know there was some talk on this call uh, a few months back about um oci runtime type containers on illumos so i'd love to see that um, what else? Um, we so we alongside this, we've been trying to um, get the ball rolling on standardizing the FreeBSD interface for OCI. And uh, Samuel Karp, who's the the RunJ author, um, and also um, a member of the OCI community for a long time, and um, so. We took the opportunity of being in the same room to have um, a full and frank conversation on on ways forward, best ways of representing gels, and we came to near and close to a consensus with the help of a really useful contact from Docker, a guy called Bjorn. I want to say Neergard, but it's I can't remember exactly. Anyway, he's he's also an OCI expert, um, a FreeBSD fan, and um, so we're going to try and pull him into the standardization process for FreeBSD as yeah, someone who really understands how it works on other platforms so that we kind of um, are going in the right direction. Apart from that, that was one day. The rest of the week was um, Linux Foundation's Open Source Summit. Is that right? Um, right? Well, a bunch of interesting content, some interesting history on computing in space by some couple of characters. Um, that I really enjoyed. Um, a lot of kind of corporate style stuff that I tried to ignore. But <laughs> yeah, I, I tagged, tagged along with Greg Wallace. Um, we did a bunch of meetings with various people trying to move the um, move the ball forward on things like Microsoft supporting FreeBSC as a .NET platform. Um, I think we understand where the gaps are now. Um, building on that, we ought to be able to get... Um, GitHub Actions to work because they're dependent on .NET. And, and so if we unblock some of the things upstream from them, we can make a case for GitHub Actions on FreeBSD. So yeah, it's all of that is a work in progress. And Greg is is doing an amazing job of trying to hold on to all the different strands and move things forward. So yeah, it was an interesting week. Um, been back in London for a couple of weeks now, so I'm properly recovered. Yeah, it's good. That is fantastic news, and I'm so sorry I could not make my way up there. I had, I had driven just yeah. a bit or two before, and I was like, yeah, not going to happen. Yeah. Now, it would have been nice to see you um, at either at Container Plumbing or, or in the OSS, but um, BSD can's coming up soon. Indeed. And it sounds like you'll make it to that. Yeah. I've got all my stuff booked for that, except I haven't registered for the conference yet. Please register um, like ASAP with a t-shirt or go that. in on this adjacent computer like right now. Yeah. Am I losing my I, mind or is I'll that not how that, you start the This week. Oh. 
Um, also, on the dev at the dev summit, I'll be trying to run a small work group around the subject of um, container images for free, for FreeBSD uh, base operating system. So, right. with the, the goal is to try and find figure out what we need to do so that we can just integrate the whole image building stuff into um, the FreeBSD release process. Excellent. Uh, among all these adventures, have you had a moment to look at the 9P client out of curiosity? <laughs> I haven't. Too many, I too much multitasking it. recently. Uh, uh, likewise. Amen. Okay, well, yeah, cool. That yeah. is a fantastic report. And all uh, get your BSD can. So that is, I can't emphasize that enough because uh, we're losing the flexibility to choose the number of meals and things and t-shirt orders will go in and we will do our best to add about 10 extra shirts based on complex mathematical projections from Colin, but still. Uh, uh, Doug, what t-shirt size do you like, <laughs> prefer? Medium usually works. Thank you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great, that's written down. Uh, any questions for Doug? Speaking of BSD can, will any of you be there? It sounds like Philip, you are headed there. What will you be presenting? Well, I'm uh, using it for a uh, uh, vaccine monitoring, uh, vaccine temperature monitoring. Right. And so yes. this is more experiential. So anyone on the uh, call is going to know a whole lot more on the technical side. Uh, but so this is basically saying, hey, here's a real world scenario uh, that uses lots and lots of BSD components uh, that are unique to BSD. So, you know, things like ZF, ZFS and uh, Jails and Dtrace and PF and the fact that it's all, you know, one kernel and user land instead of a million different distros. Uh, so basically saying what's the business use case of FreeBSD over, you know, just running it on the uh, random uh, Linux platform du jour so it's not going to be technical. It's going to be experiential. Cool. And what's your t-shirt size? And is it registered? Oh, I'm already registered. Good. Okay, good, man. Uh, Rodney, did the BSE can ferry visit you or you will not be able to attend? Nope, no way. Bummer. Okay, no worries, no worries. Not, you got way too much going on. <laughs> well, we all do, but we still somehow <laughs> squeeze this stuff in. I was quadruple booked Saturday. Fun, 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 but we had a good planning call. Anyway, so um, other topics I would love to hear more about, let's see, the package base uh, surprises that Jan, you have observed on the mailing list and maybe can enlighten us about, because I, I would like to be using that yesterday for a VM, but uh, tell us more and do you have a link to, to uh, the mailing list post? Um, the mailing list uh, is on lists.freebsd.org yep, and works. I don't have a better link than the official archive. No worries. Go ahead. So describe the issue. So the, the sequence of events. Uh, for FreeBSD 14.0, package base was not uh, ready for the release. So basically around FreeBSD uh, 14.0 P2, there was an announcement and that uh, retroactively there's now an official package base uh, repository on the existing package uh, content distribution network and it worked. Then two weeks, I think ago, um, package version uh, 1.21.2 was committed to ports. And as part of 1.21.0, which was kind of jumped over, um, it changed the behavior when it comes to the OS version environment variable. This environment variable basically contains the ABI version number normally tracked in OS world year 8. Uh, so for 14.0, it's 14,079 or something. 
So it's okay. basically bumped every time the ABI changed during development and then for releases. Um, and what happens is, is that it used to be that this variable was leaked through and that could cause you to end up if you're building different versions uh, with Prodea, so let's say you're building 13, 14, and 15 uh, base packages on the same system in Prodea, it could end up leaking the host version number in. So this was stopped. The problem is that the existing make files uh, in the base repository depended on that behavior. So that resulted that if you um, buy a package base uh, package set, now the kernel and kernel debug packages uh, have a free BSD ABI version number of zero, which is the reserved invalid value. So package will refuse to update from such a repository uh, because it says there's a package in there which is obviously invalid in your repository. So whatever I have right now has to be better. And if I don't have anything, it's still better. So you can't update uh, the local replica of the repository metadata from such a repository. And uh, the, the work runs to make it work again and fix up the, the base system uh, make files in makefile.inc1. And now it works on 14 stable and 15, but not in uh, release engineering because there wasn't an errata uh, released for that. So to build those, you either have to apply local patches or um, hack around and inject the uh, environment variable at the right places manually, which obviously is the idea. Um, I assume that I don't know that as part of working around that, uh, there were uh, two issues. So I assumed some kind of interrupted replication because the packages were incomplete on Remorse and then the packages were complete, but some complete packages were missing instead. And in both cases, the package mirror was unusable for base system packages of FreeBSD 14. And that's the issue right now. And you can find it on the package placement list. And the relevant parties responded. And I assume we'll quickly fix it now that it's reported. Is this the right thread? I didn't see mention of OS mm, version. Yeah, that's the right thread with okay. the latest. That's a, with the fallout from the failed build. Um, ah. <laughs> the other one was last month. Okay. And yeah. Ah, uh, so that's in progress. There's hope, etc. Correct. So the uh, other one would be this thread here, and yes, there's hope. There's a fix. Uh, it's already in stable and current. Great. Okay. It's yes. just that um, that doesn't help you when you're on a production release. And here's the fix for it, linked uh, from the GitLab. So we're there, and so it's just that we are observing fallout and. Um, I'll mute for two seconds. It should just uh, work in a few hours. Hopefully, at worst, in a day or two. I hope. So um, when it comes to using package base for jails, one of the unavoidable annoyances is that uh, because of the way package has to validate the base packages, when you install into an empty jail, uh, you first have to inject the public keys to validate the packets uh, against, and uh, so the packages against, and that can be worked around by just fetching them on the host and then LFS mounting a trusted set of packages with, and disabling validation on the read-only LFS, which also uh, reduces the load on the CDN and noticeably speeds up the installation time. 
So I think that's a good idea to recommend. Have you just your... do a package fetch dash A dash R free BSD dash base or something. So oh, that you keep the keep a local uh, copy and you just update the, your local replica and then validate them all, put them in an LFS of the host uh, and an LFS read only mode into the jail, uh, which neatly sidesteps the issue because then you don't have to validate a local file system. Can you drop that syntax in the chat? It sounds like we weren't using that last time we experimented. No, I don't have all. that uh, syntax uh, ready to go. OK. And it was, uh, if anything, r dash h. I can't test okay. the code because the mirrors are corrupted right oh, now. Picky, picky. <laughs> cool. Oh, my gosh. The BSD kernel version 0. OK, there's that. Great. Um, yeah. Welcome, Daniel. OK, and then let's see what this other chat is. I don't know this other thread. I mean, uh, do, 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 do. it is a For more... some reason, the one of the messages uh, from Baptiste uh, is not part of a thread. And that one contains a link to the fix. Right. So, um, yeah. That's... Well, now, OK. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, anything so else on package the, base? Um, I guess we're just kind of at the mercy of the maintainers. No, we're not. Ah. If you have a system from this uh, decade, you can just compile in under an hour yourself once and basically run uh, this command. Give me a se yep. second. Let me check that really works. Yeah, it, it works as expected. While you're doing that, Daniel, is your t-shirt request in for BSD can speak now or forever have a shirt that might not fit well? Is my what request? Your t-shirt request. Did you put that in your registration? Oh my God, I was, there's a t-shirt request in the registration? Yeah, you can choose a size. Oh my God. Hop in there and All set right. that okay. and it's expanded to accommodate the needs of various shaped people. So we will do our best, best to help everybody. But if we don't know, we can't help you. Okay. There's Thank some inside you. baseball well, um, for you. Yes, Jan, you have published OS the, version with. That's the command you can use to build a local, uh, a package repository to quickly install jails from the source tree you have to compile on the host once per security patch level, basically. Um, oh, cool. But it would be nice if you didn't have to do that. You could just pull it in from the official repository and get, get it quickly, uh, especially That's on slower cool. system. Cool. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, Daniel, any news, questions, topics, fun stuff? Um, no, I was looking a little bit more at uh, jail, at uh, jail control. Um, uh, program slash idea that uh, Clara brought to my attention um, for, for you know, an auto, a nice automated way, similar to BE control, to do easy upgrades. Um, so anyway, that's, that's looking like it's going to take a little while because, you know, I don't know if the, I don't know if the structure of the, of the jail, you know, the, uh, the default, the default roots. I, I don't know. I thought to I thought to figure out what I want to do in terms of that. You know, so, whether the the mount the mount point set up and stuff like that that uh, that happens on a on a typical V route. Um, 
So the idea is a new utility, a bit like BECTL named JLCTL. Is that right? Right. Yeah, I think I think it's in the notes already. Um, um, okay. Cool. So, but but yeah, I think yeah, I think this, uh, I I just I just want some more flexibility in terms of structure, maybe, or be convinced that I I want to keep that structure. Uh, a lot of the uh, complexity of boot environment uh, solving the bootstrapping problem, uh, which jails don't face because they always have a host uh, to mount their file systems. Yeah, exactly. So you can vastly simplify it. You can basically just use a single file system if you want to and or just create mount points as you want them with no uh, limitations imposed upon you by boot code. Yeah, the Bastille structure makes sense to me, where it's just one file system with sim links to the uh, read-only um, ah. parts of the, uh, the updated base. Um, that's a very old idea. It has been made to work several times. You can do it with uh, sim links for all the directories, but when you either find out that it breaks down as soon as you install anything non-trivial in the jail, or you need some kind of helper to find the point of divergence and then generate all the sim links to redirect you into the right uh, part of the tree you combine there. And the other part is you can kind of mess around with none of this. Um, I'm doing something similar now with ZFS and read only clones instead of read only nullfs's. And it works, but yeah, you have to automate it or it becomes very tedious and error prone. Yeah, I think I did this in like 2004 with, uh, is it, was jail around in 2004? It was, it was yeah, pretty it early. Was, 2000. Pentium, yep. yeah, Pentium 3, Pentium 3 days, <laughs> I was doing, um, Sue exact uh, Apache jails for yeah. um, for blog sales. So you're and doing things like uh, Easy Jail did it. I get, yeah, I, I I assume so. I don't think I knew about Easy Jail back then, but um, but yeah, the same the same sort of thing. Of course, you know, a 21st century version of that would be would be nice. So yeah, I think a simplified version of the of the BE control with fewer with fewer file systems. Like maybe it would make sense if temp was I don't know. Um, well what we can do already is uh, have a little hyper like what you're describing just snapshot the system. Um, and all the complexity it just lost the last few minutes uh, to uh, only appears when you have to fight your file system hierarchy. As long as things neatly mount into existing directories, it's quite easy to keep separate and update one without updating the other. Or... Yeah. The crown jewel of this would be something that it wouldn't just be the FreeBSD base, but also would be like a core set of utilities that also could be uh, rapidly provisioned across similar jails. Um, <laughs> so. you, you obviously missed the last several weeks of uh, discussions uh, in this call. Oh, because yeah. That's exactly but... what I've been messing around with. <laughs> and you can kind of do it with the FS. So Daniel, are with your union? notes online somewhere or just in the back of your head and some emails with Clara? Oh, well, uh, J, I think J, control, yeah, no, it's, I think the, I think there is a link to the, the Git repository, which is an active development. Okay. And cool. I think some of my ideas are, are, you know, being PR, not by me, cool. but, uh, yeah are happening happening in there in real time so yeah i'll find out more about that for next week all right, right. well cool anything else 
and uh, uh, you sounded surprised about t-shirts. What's what's your size request? <laughs> uh, uh, oh man, it's always tricky because I look better in one and I am more comfortable in the other. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay, we can do fitted if needed. No, no, no. Well, then just give me a large. Okay, thank you. Hands, hands large. Yep. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Uh, Rodney, is someone messing with the base again and pushing their own personal configuration to all users? Just, just curious. No, this came, this came in via Git, and I don't really know who the person is, but yeah, I mean, this that's a continuous, ongoing... People think default should be changed just because this is what the new modern norm usually uses. Well, it's just configuration stuff. Put it in your environment and move mm -hmm. on. Don't... Mm -hmm. Don't keep tweaking the base system to update default heads, default outputs and stuff, because it just that just screws with other people's use and implementation. I mean, I basically when we imported four four, I went through and nuked all of the configuration settings in all of the skeleton files, all the dot files everywhere. We just eliminated all of them and said, people want things. People can set things, but we're not going to ship pre-configured systems. Interesting. Wait, you don't have an Apache configuration style with a existing directory structure pre-ship? How a user does ever expect it to figure that out? <laughs> yeah, I have config underbar format has been there for. 18 years or something like that, 16 years. So people that want other output from I have config have learned how to do it and they've done it. So I don't understand what the big push is to change what the default output is, other than it's gonna break people's scripts that that are working. Yep. Yep. And yep. Yeah, it's a little yeah. you know, all you gotta all you gotta do to fix your script is add an I have config to it. Well, no, it's not really that simple because if that script runs across multiple FreeBSD versions and or multiple platforms, I now have to add all the conditional goop to go, okay, on FreeBSD mm -hmm, greater better. than 15, I have to do this. Or even better, yeah, I would if I could still log in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, ouch, nice, okay. Well, well, that's my concern with the redirect one is if that gets pushed out and somebody is dependent upon redirects being processed from their router to allow connectivity to their box, they may end up locked out of their box. It may happen if they have any of the custom startup scripts which use IF config or require some, let's oh, yeah. say, VPN daemon which passes IF config uh, to... As because they don't bind SSH to the public IP address, for example, or maybe like, so yeah. many ways yeah, this yeah, can yeah, go wrong. Yeah, they're agreed. And I, I, I think most of the people that propose these types of changes are not the type of people that have ever run large infrastructures. In my they opinion, don't understand the... what a little teeny change, what a ass biter it can be. And there are places where you can risk things, and there are places you should be very careful. And yeah. this is one of the every the next step would be file system on disk structures. <laughs> uh, how can one best follow this discussion? You said it was on a mailing list, and if so, which no, mailing no, list? It's it's it, there's a pull request here. Hang on. Oh me, sure, uh, yeah. Uh, Nick is asking, and that's a valid question because we're going to discuss it. Have your links handy, and welcome, Nick. Thank you. Let me get. Uh, okay. I because I saw so, someone did a like Mastodon post about this, so. I'm interested. Do you have that Mastodon post? I missed it. Bring, Are we talking your about this? Handy. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, I see a link. I'm copying the link. I'm dropping it in there and I'll put it in the right place. But for oh, now, yeah, somebody, yeah, they were the person that submitted the pull request was told by Warner to go post it to Arch and 
network or something. Um, not what I wanted. Oh, oh yeah, right that's, I think that's the one, that the one. The IP yeah, config right. change default IP address on it to site. No, change. Yes. Okay. That's the one. Thank you. Sure. And it, there's a second link. Should I care about it? It what? That's another... just a, a comment in the same thread which points out the obvious. Uh, boom. Give it a second to load. Boom. Yeah. This is a bad idea as it will break yeah, thousands it, 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 of scripts and you can achieve the same result by adding a single line to your shell startup script. It, Thank the, you, Des. And Des is not this, a drive-by committer. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> the, the people that want this can easily... The people that want this have already done that. Mike Carl has already admitted that he's done that and so is the submitter to this. Says, yeah, I run with this environment variable. I don't so, have any problem... Uh, uh, it's just that I'm so familiar with the existing output that I haven't put it in, but I've known about it and tried it and just put it in a shell alias or put it in my default yeah. environment. And yeah, if you want it, if you want it system wide, put it in in Etsy RC dot RC. Um, if you uh, really want it system wide, put it in etc login conf. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. If you want to be less invasive about it, put it in your shirts uh, dot profile. Yeah, there's there's lots of ways to deal with it. But the problem is, unless some people get up and start jumping up and down in this PR, Warner's probably going to just push it in. So, which is usually what happens to these types of, of what I will call thorns, death by a thousand thorns. I mean, I just... We keep tweaking these little things that cause pain, and there's no good, unless there's a really good fundamental reason, we shouldn't do that. Yes, Cedar notation has been in use for 30 years, but again, the key word, and I said it in the PR, is Cedar is a notation. All of the RFCs, all of the protocols through V4, all use a 32-bit nest mass value. It is a 32-bit unsigned integer. Uh, if you look in the INET uh, P2... Oh, here, here's the... What, what's uh, going to... First, right now, the way it is, I, I have config silently ignores the fact if you set a non... if you try to set a non-contiguous... It just silently ignores it and truncates it at the first zero bit. Yep. I do not know yep. what's going to happen if I actually I octal set it in my kernel and ran the current if config or this patch if config for an output. Is it going to report? It's probably going to report a bogus prefix length. I don't have yep. a problem if we're going to. I mean, if we're going to abandon non-continuous net mass. Do it in the kernel, get it done, get it properly. I'm not even out. sure that it's still supported in the kernel. I, I think remember the kernel will still work other than the routing. The only thing that won't work is the routes, and the routes have never worked. Other than, than locally, because I the, most people don't ever look at the ways that this thing was used in, in historically. One of them I've seen done is you set the you add the lowest bit to the net mask and split half of your host. All the even hosts are on one network segment. All the odd hosts are on another network segment. And because it's the last bit, the Patricia tree stuff just kind of works. Because it gets all the way down to the end of it, and then it has to select a route based upon the interface address, and that works. Daniel, will this impact you and your automation of dozens, if not hundreds, of systems? Oh, absolutely. It's okay, going to be do, do you do you, <laughs> parse the, do you parse the output of if config? I I do though. I've been switching to parsing the output for for like gathering gathering um, info uh, to. Um, uh, <clears throat> Um. Oh my God. 
Sorry, my brain is Jason Lebexo something. I don't know. No, 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 no. I was uh, which which tool? Um, I think An I I haven't tested it, but I don't know if if Ansible Gather doesn't use this. Um. Yeah, maybe. Ansible setup. Because there's a thing case. in Ansible that will go out and get certain parameters about all of your hosts listed in the Ansible host target. There's a default tool. And I don't know if that uses if config or if I think that just uses Python library. And so it does. I think it uses a Python library. And it depends on what the implementation in Python does uh, of the relevant modules. It could be that. They just use for correct IOCTOs uh, or Netlink or whatever works yeah. on the platform. But there, there are things other than Ansible which are less bloated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just, I'm trying to think of if we could definitely point at some broken tools, it, this will break tooling like Ansible or something good else. Point. Um, That's it good will one. probably break tools like uh, open VPN configurations. Um, or maybe even the tool itself, because I think OpenVPN spins off IF config uh, on BSD. Same for zero tier uh, to configure it. I don't know if they'll pass it back, but uh, at least I know that zero tier and it used to it be OpenVPN as well. It's set values in, IF config. All the setting stuff will still work. You can still specify a network, but. It's not the only the output is what's changed. But to find out what you have to change, you first have to pass the existing output and then run it Usually. again to do the modification. Yeah. Usually. So you have this kind of read, uh, read modify, modify write. write cycle. Yeah. I just. Daniel, how will this bite you in the butt? And are well, I do tools? use. Yeah, I do use IF config for um, inventory inventory management. So, and then my inventory management feeds my DNS. So, ah. if I stop parsing, that's that's going to be ugly. So, I mean, I guess, I guess, what are my options? Is it I in fact use... going to cause you to stop parsing because the IP is going to come back as as a cedared IP instead of saying inet value netmask value? Yep, you can no longer parse it with cut or something to. Yeah, split, exactly. because now you have different field separators other than just spaces. Right. And I know for a fact that that will uh, break my oh, that's gonna DNS break. script. It's going to break uh, anybody that's trying to parse the IP field. Yep. Uh, and yeah, it's so actually gonna get quite a bit that. more uh, because it can just happen that the parser will error out if it's well written. Yeah. It sees something it can't parse, so it bails out. Or it's either available bad value. Yeah. Which then blows up later when it tries to use it in something. I, I just oh, that yeah. will happen to others too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just know because that you know, run, it, it, run, we, we know what these things look like, but I would like to if we could actually point to known tooling in the PR that you're gonna break this stuff. Is that really a good idea? I don't think someone's five-star cron job to update some DUN DNS provider accounts. Counts as a good example, I mean. Find those good examples. I wonder if it breaks Hurricane's tunnel configuration. I don't think so. How long do you think will these PRs be open for us to comment on usually through github this, mine only took this five PR months could get, end up committed at any point in time because yeah. it's got warner lost finger on it okay it could already be committed and i don't know it why isn't this a switch it already is it's, this is, it is. Oh, yeah right it's, it's, <laughs> right it's set in the environment it's, so it's not right 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 okay so it's not so, so, but that, that means the environment remove fix. the feature, but they are basically proposing to Making ship a a yeah. incompatible default, which will break existing scripts, which is, have an assumption of what I have config for a given set of arguments will output. And note that that 
So if config output is common across Linux and BSDs. Especially BSDs across time. Yes, as far as I know, across time for BSD, as far as that line goes, is the line that has the IP address, the net mask in it. That line is probably unchanged in in 40 years. Well, I, I'd rank this as I'd rank this as medium annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's not a but the problem is that the mindset needs to get out there that we need to quit doing medium annoying things because it's what you after you annoy somebody five or ten times they just go fuck it I'm going to go somewhere else and not get annoyed. That's, right. I mean, literally, I don't. I go to a lot of conferences or have in the past four or five years. I run into lots of people. Oh, yeah, yeah, I used to run FreeBSD, but I got, and for some reason, something happened, and they just like, it's not worth it anymore. One, one of them was as, as simple as is my, my bug fixes got ignored, and the bug stayed. Yeah, I guess there's something to be said for... 40 years of documentation and then, you know, fixing every imaginable yeah. recommendation on Google that's now going to not work. That's, or not that's look the other the one I hate is, is we make changes without forethought of the impact it has on not only search results from Google, published textbooks, huh. networking on configuration of BSDs. I mean, I mean, we make changes that, that break all the BSD books all the time. It's just, it's horrific. Those, most of those textbooks are now useless. Get that feedback in the PR because whoever came up with this is not seeing that or is maintaining can, such a small system you. that they're like, oh, well, it's easy for, I won't name any I companies, can, but like for company A to push out and fix it on their systems. I can promise you the more I push on that PR, the more likely Warner is to go commit it. Understood. So uh, others, hey, and I'm happy to, I can drop in a link from the recording saying, hey, we discussed this here as production users and here are some of the points and go listen in. Um, no, because it's I'm because it, you're here. Yeah. Oh, good. Because okay. I'm here. Part of it. But it, it would if I, particularly there are some people here that have current larger FreeBSD installations. I no longer run a large FreeBSD installation anywhere of any type, so I can't speak to this to known broken stuff that this will break. And if if Daniel or or Johan can chime in with this is going to break my deployed system in this way. Or it's going to break this set of tools. It's going to break. It probably won't break Ansible, but it will break something. I'm sure it will break some large um, orchestration tool somewhere. Uh, just grab through the rc.d scripts from ports. Yeah, how can I get a collection of all of those? <laughs> they should be just port name dot in in the files directory most of the time unless the uh, upstream already includes oh, yeah, uh, I could, one I could, well uh, no because they're they're frequently named foo dot in because they're processed when installed exactly it, in the files directory um you could look and through not, the, they're, they're not reasonably named yeah um, they don't all have the same names so they're not easy to find Rather easy to find in the packages because they all install into. Okay, yeah, but you know how much download that is. <laughs> no, no, the manifest, and then right. in the manifest you can already should already have the um, have. But it does this That's contain right, this file, and then you can uh, only do the those packages because uh, I think the majority don't. And okay, yeah. Uh, Extract, you can kind of tell TAR to only extract this file, and then you only have to download until that file because you can stream, you pipe it, it into TAR-O something to print that file out, but yeah. 
Hmm. I could probably hack the .mk files faster and just run a make make rc.com in a porch tree with a hack mk file that would extract them all. Yeah. Or you could uh, you grab for files in the port tree which contain the magic dot include uh, dot uh, space uh, the new line dot space uh, slash etc uh, rc dot I'm Just looking at for I'm... that for, for line starting with that in the port tree checkout. And that should give you 90 plus percent, or probably 99 plus percent of all the uh, RC.T scripts and ports. I mean, in theory, you could use something like a here talk in a make file or something, but I don't think any port maintainer. Yeah, we see that. there's nothing that in the make files that clearly identifies what is an RC.D file. No, but what else uh, contains a line starting with dot space? Uh, Slash etc rc.sapro rc.sapro because of the, and then maybe the run command as well. If you have those two in a single file, you're pretty sure that oh, it's you can use, use underbar rc underbar subr. I think yeah. that I would. No, no, it's not an underscore. Let me check. I'm just looking at a port now that has an that I know has an RC file in it, but I don't understand how FRR how that builds that. There's some magic goop somewhere. What's the name of the file in the files directory? Because I think the file name is weird. Is the all those of them in, in, should match this? Get any response from freebsd.org. Uh, Try something like that as a starting point, and you should find them. No, that won't get it for you. Oh, sorry, that uh, for some reason it ate the dot. Yeah, I know that, but it still won't get to. It will not get it for you. More okay. I, I think the only place you're going to find the Etsy RC dot substring is in the disk files. How no, that file. That how that file gets built is make file dependent. Um, that's the shell file you're supposed to source into the script running as an rc.t service. So yeah, all I know, the RC... I know what the file, I know what the rc.d files are, but I'm, I'm, oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying that'll, uh, maybe, yeah, right. All of them in the beginning after the yeah, comment yeah. with the provides, Yep. Drop that file into the current shell with a, with this single line, and that line is so trivial that I expect all of them to be trivially matchable with a regex. Jan, did this preserve your dots and friends hmm? on screen? Yeah, I think that that should uh, quote everything correctly. Oh, okay. Except that uh, I think. Uh, your get... Mac uh, yep. used the fancy kind of yes, uh, sir. semantics. Yes, sir. No, the other think... kind of. Fi... No, oh, yeah. That? That's the wrong type. That's a back tick, not a single tick, I think. Oh, you want single tick? a very strange oh. font. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Single tick, not back tick. Uh, well, yeah, well, now it does stupid things. Hey, it's being too smart. Uh, okay. Um, What if I option? Ah. Uh. Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, it's a Google Doc. It's trying to balance it's the quotes. Helping. Yeah, it. I know. It's like, oh, here, let us help you. It's like, no. There's one from there. There's one from... Okay. okay. Hopefully that. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't think you Let's... need the trailing star. You've already told it to do it recursively. 
uh, you don't want to uh, to lock and the trailing stars only so that uh, you don't look into dot files and stuff and hidden files. Oh, like oh, you don't okay. want to just okay. go yeah. through all the git files. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah, so you don't think it goes in hidden get, directories. You're right. You're right. That's fine. And that's the majority of the crap you really don't want to look at because you don't care if some the string appears in some object which yeah. wasn't compressed or something. And the gigabytes of history. <laughs> Anything else? Nick, welcome. You rolled in. Uh, do you have any questions, topics, ideas, and can you chime in on that PR? Uh, I don't have anything, but uh, I will look into trying to help out with the PR. Cool. I mean, if it doesn't affect you, it doesn't, you know, need to. Um, every Pointing out that every book that's been yeah. written uh, is suddenly obsolete for trivial reasons is no, not helpful. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Anyway, yeah, interestingly, interestingly, the point to point links have a. Hmm, I'm just looking at some that line and some outputs. Um, it's non trivial to parse, but if you take the first one up to the first space, it will always get you the IP address. Okay. Hmm. Try to find a porch tree I have pulled out somewhere I can go run Yon's command over. I'll let 230. In off topic news, I'm pleased that Mark Johnson and Alexander Moulton are looking at my reproducible MakeFS bug, and <laughs> the right people are taking a peek. So hopefully that'll be fixed for 14.1. Evidently, there's a shortage of people running for core. Are we still recording? Uh, we're not, but it's a okay. shame. No, That's no, a no, secret. No. Uh, wait, we are recording. We are recording, but uh, how is it that all core news is a secret from the entire broader community? Such like, oh, we had an election. It's like, oh, <laughs> really? Okay. Um, fascinating. So yeah, the election process is only announced to the developers. Only people eligible to vote. Uh, whoa, 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 no, committers. There are developers absolutely everywhere. There are they're on the call. Oh, okay. they're, they're they're all over right. the planet. They are deep in companies yes. and they just maybe don't commit. And I I that distinction is problematic to put it politely. Yeah, I so is Trump gonna win again? What's that? What, Daniel? Nothing, bad joke, bad joke, bad joke. Is yeah, someone gonna okay, fine, but I like bad jokes. I maintain a list of bad jokes uh, for our. Uh, I, I said, I said, is Putin going to win again? Oh, jeez. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Norm will win. This Norm guy who always says that community norms are why we do any given arbitrary thing at any time. But I guess maybe that is a topic for after this or at BSD can. Um, any other on topic jail questions and ideas and concerns? Well, so one concern that I have about this PR. Is I know <clears throat> that it's for free BSD and I am Mac, but Apple still does the doesn't use cider in if config. Yeah. So nobody does. nobody does. This this will be the first time that by default if config outputs in cedar format. Nobody's done this by default. Yeah. So uh, that's that's my good. concern about why it's going to impact so much tooling, because nobody's tried this yet. It's yeah. interesting how long we're discussing about such a, on first glance, trivial issue, and we're, we're trying really hard to f come to uh, predict the potential fallout. And everyone fears that it will break, and probably with good reason, because I am the, the camp. Please don't do that. But yeah, what? It's like a modern a... defaults, like a modern defaults for one, 
like a recommended modern default like uh like fortune thing or something when you when you install like like why isn't there like a i don't know like a modern default thing which sets your environment variables to do fun things like show cedar addresses and other you know forward looking ideas oh. and that's an opt-in thing rather than change defaults of a tool that's been the same for I I always have to install my years. offensive login jokes back in. Yeah, who doesn't do that anyway? <laughs> because who doesn't want to be cursed at every time you log into a system, right? Or insulted or whatever. Okay, maybe not everyone has my humor. Um... Okay, gang, anything else? Or shall I call it? At about nine after UTC, the one true time zone, according to this call, short of those who prefer Greenwich Mean Time. Going once, going twice. Like and subscribe.